Good afternoon. It's great to be here uh, with our partners in the Suffolk County Water Authority at their educational center, which is so fitting uh, because we are here uh, not only to talk about something very specific, a specific partnership that will help us protect our aquifer, but also we're here to educate the public about the importance of our aquifer. And of course, the Suffolk County Water Authority is the leader on that front. We're here joined by members of my office, as well as the Suffolk County Police Department assigned to my office, and members of the Suffolk County Water Authority. In particular, it's my great pleasure and privilege to be here uh, with the chairman of the Suffolk County Water Authority, Pat Halpin. And I want to thank Mr. Halpin for the invitation and this partnership. This is a tremendous partnership that we're about to detail, uh, and I really want to thank him for his leadership. Also, the CEO of the Suffolk County Water Authority, Jeff Zalo. Uh, Jeff, uh, we've been working together on water quality issues as it relates to my office's mission. I want to thank Jeff for his partnership. And of course, we have uh, many members of their team, esteemed members of their team, including the Director of Water Quality and Laboratory Services, Kevin Kerr. And we have Laboratory Manager, Tom Schneider, Chief Legal Officer, Tim Hopkins. And in my office, we have the Bureau Chief of the Enhanced Prosecution Bureau, which is where we prosecute, where we do our investigations and prosecutions of environmental crimes, that's Nick Morrow. And uh, with us as well are the assistant district attorneys that do a lot of this work, and that's Adriana Mayola and Laura Sarowitz. And then of course our investigative arm, uh, the district attorney's detective squad. Uh, these are Suffolk County police detectives who are assigned to our office and do specialized investigations. And with us is our environmental crime team. Uh, which consists of our prosecutors as well as the detectives. We have Detective Lieutenant Chuck Lowman. We have Detective Sergeant Dave Jacama. And of course, the detectives um, who uh, are not up here today, so I suppose they don't want me to mention their names. Um, but we have uh, other detectives uh, here with us uh, who are experts uh, in this area and do a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And I want to thank them for their expertise. Uh, they actually spend a lot of time focus on specialized training, uh, which uh, can be uh, you know, extremely difficult in normal times, particularly during COVID, uh, and they put a lot of time and effort into ensuring that they are experts in investigating environmental crimes. So I want to thank uh, those detectives for their partnership. So as many of you know, because you've covered a lot of our work, one of our top priorities in the Suffolk County DA's office is to investigate and prosecute environmental crime. In 2018, we launched what ultimately became the largest ever illegal dumping investigation and prosecution in New York State history. We did that out of my office in collaboration with the Suffolk County Police Department, essentially the detectives uh, that I just mentioned, as well as the DEC and several other agencies. And what we did was we brought an indictment, a 130 count indictment against 30 defendants, all of whom have pled guilty. And the ringleader actually was sentenced to two to four years in prison, which is the largest prison sentence, the longest prison sentence for an environmental criminal in Suffolk County. We sent a clear message that we were not going to tolerate illegal dumping in Suffolk County. But we also, we didn't stop there. We also convened a special grand jury that issued a grand jury report that made a number of recommendations to our partners in the state legislature as well as the governor's office to, to help give law enforcement prosecutors and investigators the resources and the tools and the laws that we need to, to prevent and deter environmental crime. And that report was issued and in fact the legislature and the governor adopted those recommendations into law. We now have, we have statutes on the book, felony statutes that allow us to more effectively prosecute environmental crimes. So you know, this isn't just about the DA's office. It's not just about the Suffolk County Water Authority. It's about all of our partners in government and outside of government uh, to help protect our environment here in Suffolk County. And nothing's more important when it comes to the environment than our aquifer. Like, we drink, we get our drinking water from our aquifer. We have a sole source aquifer here in Suffolk County. Every time you put on your faucet and fill up a glass of water and take a sip, you're able to do that because we protect our aquifer here in Suffolk County. And we have to make that a top priority. Every time you turn on your shower, every time you put your child in a bath, we depend on the fact that we need to protect our aquifer and keep it clean. And so this, this partnership builds upon the work we're doing in the DA's office in terms of fighting environmental crime. But it specifically relates to our commitment 
along with the Suffolk County Water Authority, to protect our aquifer, where we get our drinking water. And in particular, what this partnership does, it provides that the Suffolk County Water Authority will give the Suffolk County DA's office data collected from its wells at no cost to the DA's office. It will also, if a certain location is identified as a potential source of pollution, either by our office through investigative techniques or by the Suffolk County, Suffolk County Water Authority, the agencies will work together to identify the source of the pollution using groundwater flow mapping and modeling by the Suffolk County Water Authority's GIS system. This is an important part of the partnership. Of the, partnership. the Suffolk, County, Suffolk County Water Authority may also increase groundwater and soil testing around suspected pollution sites at my office's request and will perform testing on samples collected by my office in the course of our investigation. The goal here is to identify sources of pollution for potential investigation and prosecution. That's the short-term goal, which is very important to send a message that we will not tolerate polluters, particularly those bad actors who are going to contaminate our aquifer. The long-term goal is to continue to protect our aquifer, continue to develop systems, partnerships, and processes that ensure that not only we are able to drink our groundwater, but that our children can, that our grandchildren can, and that our great-grandchildren can, and so on and, and, and so forth. It is important that we protect our aquifer for future generations. The long-term goal here is to ensure that we leave our family, our future generations, what was left to us the ability to turn on that faucet and drink that water with peace of mind. So I want to thank the Suffolk County, Suffolk County Water Authority for their partnership. Uh, this is very exciting. Not only is it obviously uh, a, a commitment from both organizations that we are here to protect our aquifer, but it's a very strategic partnership where the DA's office in the course of investigations will have the benefit of testing and data collection and data analysis by the experts. By the experts. And you're gonna be you're gonna be hearing from one of those experts in a moment. And this does not happen without leadership. And that brings me uh, to Mr. Halpin. I want to thank Mr. Halpin for his commitment, obviously to the protection of our aquifer, but also his recognition, his his vision that a partnership with law enforcement who's committed to investigating and prosecuting polluters is important. And I want to thank him for, for reaching out to the office and helping form this partnership. And it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce to you uh, Mr. Pat Halpin, the chairman of the Suffolk County, Suffolk County Water Authority and a true partner to the DA's office. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. District Attorney. Uh, it is a uh, honor to be here. Uh, this is this is a landmark partnership. Uh, no other large water provider, water utility in America, has forged this kind of partnership uh, with their local district attorney. And as you heard from Tim City, it's about protecting our drinking water supply. You know, as I was driving here, I was like, I was county executive, believe it or not, 31 years ago. I didn't have as much white hair. Uh, but uh, 31 years ago, uh, we announced, on behalf of the people of Suffolk County, the largest acquisition of pine barrens in Suffolk County. And that was the area around Hampton Hills. There's a golf course there. It is right in the heart of the critical recharge area. And we were determined uh, to buy that, to protect it, to preserve it. And by the way, uh, when I was there, we invested over $100 million in non protection. And county executives since then have done even more. Uh, so most of the critical recharge areas are protected from development. What we're all concerned about is stewardship, making sure 
that those critical recharge areas are not polluted by the kind of illegal dumping that we see. And that is why this partnership with the district attorney's office is so important. Uh, as he mentioned, you know, we spend a lot of money and energy and time and expertise making sure that the water that comes out of the taps of 1.3 million Suffolk County residents is the safest drinking water anywhere. We have the highest quality drinking water in America, and we can prove it. And the reason is, is that we have a world-class lab right behind these walls uh, that uh, constantly tests our water supply. No other water provider in America tests for more things more often, and our internal standards are more rigorous than uh, what the state of New York and the federal government require. So we take this very seriously. And the fact that we can enter into this partnership with the district attorney means that we can avoid future very expensive treatment costs. Right now, this year, the board of the Suffolk County Water Authority is investing over $12 million to put in these large granulated filter systems to remove PFA and PFOS and other contaminants. Those are the emerging contaminants where the state of New York has set the most rigorous standards in America. And we're spending even more money uh, putting in treatment systems to take out 1,4-dioxane. That's a very expensive treatment. And over the course of the next five to seven years, all of that cost, which is being paid for by our customers, by our ratepayers, by Suffolk County residents, will be in excess of $150 million. So preventing those costs wherever possible, in our mind, is money well spent, and it's a good investment. And we know that this partnership is designed to do two things. One thing the district attorneys made clear with this environmental unit is that if you pollute and you get caught, you are going to pay a very, very heavy price, including possible jail time, prison time. What we're saying is that we want to catch the polluters uh, before th that pollution gets to our wells. And what you see here are all the various Suffolk County Water Authority wells and monitoring wells those monitoring wells are primarily from the USGS, but also Suffolk County Health Department and others. So we know more about our water supply and where it's coming from and what's in that water in, any, in all of these wells than we've ever, we know more about it today than we've ever known before. But the question is, what do you do about it when you see a trend? If you will, to just stand right over here. So these wells, each one of these wells represents, this is a pump station. And we have over 250 pump stations. We have about 700 wells and many, many more when you add up all the other wells by others. So if somebody pollutes here, right here, it'll get to our well in about five years. This is a zone of capture. Up here, about 15 years, but it will get to our well. Up here, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, but the water migrates towards that well and eventually it ends up there. We want to catch it when, before it gets even close to our well. And we have the capacity to do that, either through the well itself or by putting in sample wells to see what's going on in the given area. And when we have that information, we're able through our GIS system to go back and determine what are the uses that are upstream that could be possibly that could possibly be contaminating this? Well, and putting those contaminants in, and uh, to put that in a, in a context, years ago, in the 70s, they found a chemical. There was a chemical put in, ga in gasoline called MTBE, and they put it in as an additive to reduce air pollution in the winter. Sounded like a good idea. That MTBE was a very persistent, aggressive chemical, and it made our way, its way into our wells over a period of time because the gas stations back then had old gas tanks and they were leaking. They didn't even know it was leaking, but we found it in our wells. Eventually, the Suffolk Water Authority and other water providers here on Long Island, because we get it from a cell source aquifer, 
we sued the oil companies. And many years later, after lengthy litigation, uh, the Water Authority was awarded in the neighborhood of $125 million to pay for the cleanup of the MTBE. We would have preferred to have never had to go into that litigation, identified that pollution, and avoided that cost, and avoided you know, the learning about the fact that this had gotten into our, into our water supply. So we try to be creative problem solvers. We have a district attorney that is dedicated to fighting environmental crimes. And you know what? This is going to make a huge difference. As I said before, the people of Suffolk County have invested hundreds of millions of dollars, perhaps billions of dollars, in protecting our critical recharge area. Our job is to be a great steward for our people so that they can have the highest confidence that the water supply that they're utilizing is of very high quality. But even more importantly, and Tim, I was thinking about this the other day when I was driving by uh, the Riverhead County Center. I looked over there, and there's all these open spaces, all these pine barrens. And I thought to myself, I said, my children, my children's children, my grandchildren, future generations after us, that's just the way it'll be. Wild, untouched, and our job is to make sure that nobody goes in and desecrates them. So thank you very much. Um, we have uh, some questions here, if you have them, by the experts. Kevin, Dirk, why don't you come up here and talk a little bit about our testing. Tom, you're or answer the questions. Tom, why don't you get up here? Does anybody have any questions? So, Matt, currently when the Water Authority discovers any kind of abnormalities or pollutions in their wells through their testing, what is the information, what do you guys do with the information now as compared to what you're gonna do with them? Going well, what we do is when we detect a, a compound that we don't expect, or it's a new compound for a well, we'll increase our monitoring. We test at a much higher frequency, as Jeff had said, it from than the county requires or the state requires. So we up our testing and keep an eye on it. Once it hits a certain level, then we decide if we're going to put treatment in for it, such as granular activated carbon or iron removal or things of that nature. So we keep a tab on it. A lot of times the compound may show up in the well because it may be around, be around an industry just and just show up but it'll stay at a steady level it still is below what's considered the maximum contamination level a lot of like volatile organic compounds have a, an MCL of 5 ppb that's parts uh, per billion so, and we're uh, very proactive that we have wells that are on GAC and when it hits half the MCL we change out the carbon so we, right on top of things. We monitor our, our wells a lot more frequently, like I said, than Are there circumstances, though, where you would take that information and share it with prosecutors now? Right. Well, what happens is if we see something such as we had a well field where we had the MTB that Pat was talking about, and it exceeded the MCL. We had carbon in place, but we notified the Suffolk County Department of Health Services, and they notified the DEC, and they did an investigation on it. So this, and this goes both ways, which is important, right? So if the Water Authority picks something up that they think the DA's office should know about because uh, it could lead to an investigation and prosecution of polluters, uh, that's one part of it. But also, we may get intel about is that act, uh, and you know, whether it's through a human source or in connection with uh, an investigation, whatever the case may be, and then we could go to the Suffolk County Water Authority and say, hey, can we do testing in this area? Because we think there's a bad actor here. And that's what's really exciting about this partnership. You know, the Suffolk County Water Authority now is basically part of our environmental crimes team. It gives us a, a, just a powerful tool uh, to help us identify additional evidence in, in our investigations. You, know, you, you, you remember at the Operation Pay Dirt, that was focused on solid waste, right? But liquid waste is extremely important because that even has an increased likelihood of getting into our, into our aquifer. So, you know, sort of view this as sort of the second phase. You know, we've been focused on solid waste, and now we're going into a new frontier, and we're going to be super focused on liquid waste. And the Suffolk County Water Authority is, is, a, is a key to our success on that front. Any other questions? I think that's an important point, to attend. Um, as we've seen, I, we talked about MTBE before that. We had problems with uh, certain chemicals used by dry cleaners. All of that gets dumped in the ground at the time. Nobody was breaking any laws, but we learned that those were very toxic chemicals. And look, there are a lot of bad actors out there that want to just, in the dark of night, 
dump a load of very toxic chemicals that could put our water supply at risk, but certainly will poison the aquifer, especially the upper glacial. And uh, we're at your disposal. If you need us out there, we'll be putting those uh, wells, those uh, test wells and, and other, use whatever, whatever tools we have in our toolkit uh, to protect our, our aquifer. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.